welcome back to another episode of uh, Wine for the People. Basically here again after I visited another wine region in Victoria. You know, after I, I did a little bit of a video kind of going through my experience going to the Mornington Peninsula, which was fantastic. And there was a bunch of great di different wineries that I went to over there. I thought, well, why not give another region in Victoria a crack? And I think out of regions in Victoria, the next logical step, as far as internationally acclaimed wine regions are concerned, it was an absolute no brainer to go to the Yarra Valley. And it's also very convenient because that's the one that is closest to my house. So a couple of weeks ago, myself and my partner drove up from my house in Preston all the way up the highway to the Yarra Valley. And we made a little hit list of go to a couple of different cellar doors, go to a restaurant, do the whole thing uh, and have a good time. And I guess uh, this is kind of the experience that I enjoyed over there. Now, Full disclaimer, I have been to the Yarra Valley a couple of times before. I love the Yarra Valley. I love a lot of their wines. Their Pinots are some of my favorite Pinot Noir in the country. I love their Cabernets. I love their Syrah. Chardonnay is pretty good too. Sparkling wine's great. Like I love the Yarra Valley. It's cool, cool region. And there's a lot of fun stuff going on. So we wanted to kind of hit a couple of places that we hadn't been before. And as far as like the cool, hypey wineries that are in the region, we've been to a lot of them. We've been to Yarra Yearing. We went to the old Mac Forbes cellar door, the Graceburn Wine Room. We've done a few different fun things like that. We've been to Payne and Jones, like which is, you know, the kind of really good fun places. So we wanted to do a couple of classics. So we started off at Yearing Station, which was actually Victoria's first established vineyard. So, you know, it's kind of changed a little bit since then and, you know, as far as the place and ownership and stuff like that. But we decided to pop in and, you know, if it's the first of a region, a first of a, a state even in this country, we thought it'd be worth a crack and have a taste. And yeah, we went through the whole thing. The, the cellar door is amazing. Like the building itself is like old and it's just like all kind of shearing shed. It's huge. It's, you know, it's well filled out. And I'm going to throw all the wines. They're really good. Like they're pretty, they're pretty good. There's absolutely more exciting wineries out there, but the wines are pretty typical of the region. They're relatively be well priced as well which is really exciting and there's sweet wines there's a range of sparklings which are really cool but the one that we actually walked away with was the Shiraz Viognier I have a bit of an affinity towards Yarra Valley Shiraz more than anything else or Syrah these guys are calling it Shiraz probably for international marketing purposes and things like that like I really love Yarra Valley Syrah I think it's almost even better than you know some of the other, other grape varieties that are more known for I think it's sometimes even better than the Chardonnay from the region but what I like about it is that kind of pretty blue fruited almost more like Rhone-esque there's this like kind of pepperiness and this like kind of floral juiciness that you kind of get out of Syrah Viognier or Shiraz Viognier from the region that you don't see from other, other Australian wine regions. And that's why I like it so much. And a little splash of Viognier and they're doing the co roti thing and it's just absolutely delicious. So that was really good. This is about $45. So as far as wines from Victoria, that's pretty well priced for me. Um, and definitely one that I'll probably wait till next uh, winter to crack into is, you know, September now. So it's starting to warm up. And then after that, we actually went to lunch at, at a little restaurant called number 11 Heelsville. That's the right number, which is right in the heart of the Arab Valley in the main town of Hillsville. Amazing restaurant. It's kind of like central Southern American influenced food. And they've actually got a winery in the back. I think it's a, you know, really hardcore natural producer called Fallow Wines. And they were actually pouring two of their wines by the glass. There was a Sauvignon Blanc, Barrel Fermented, Malo Ferment, all that kind of thing. Rounding out of the, all those kind of, you know, unenjoyable notes of Sauvignon Blanc that, you know, occur in New World examples. And then also, um, we also had a carbonically macerated, like rosé style Cab Sav, which was really interesting, really texturally very funky, but, you know, clean as a whistle. Like that was the great thing about both these wines. There was no real like VA or mousiness or bready thing. It wasn't like, it was really clean natural wine, which is awesome. I think that's the great thing about the whole natural wine thing at the moment is that, you know, there's this demand for quality natural wine at the moment. If it's not good, it doesn't really see the light of day. And this was the exceptional stuff, particularly the Sauvignon Block. I really, really enjoyed that. So after that, there is a cellar door that is in the heart of Healsville that to be honest, I'd been to before, but when you're, when it's literally a walk down the street from the restaurant. So we actually popped down to Giant Steps. Now, Giant Steps have just been named Winery of the Year in Australia. The Pinot Noir from the Applejack Vineyard has been named Pinot Noir of the Year. They've had a pretty good couple of months. Um, so we went through and tasted a bunch of their wines. We kind of did their like little mid-tier tasting, which is like comparing 
their like you know village wine versus their single vineyard wines and versus their chardonnay and the pinot noir and then they also showed their kind of other things like a syrah cabernet blend and things like that um but uh, the the good people there actually recognized me i'm sorry if i'm misremembering your name but i think it's Jaden. uh looked after us really really well and gave us a couple of extra things um and of course we walked away with some stuff uh the most importantly is the wine that when we had on the show we absolutely lost our minds over which is the primavera vineyard uh pinot noir uh one of the best pinots in the arab valley from arguably the best producer in the arab valley and you know as the ex james halliday wine companion I believe is the best winery in australia and i'll tell you what like the wines that we tasted on that day definitely backed up to that um you know that lofty moniker that was bestowed upon them chardonnays were fantastic particularly the the single vineyard stuff like the wombat creek was just absolutely phenomenal and then yeah this primavera was absolutely fantastic we only walked away with the one bottle because to tell you what we did get looked after very well and Jaden knocked a couple of bucks off the wine for us which is really nice but you know they are get like you know they start at pretty much 50 bucks with the pinot and chard and things like that so it's premium wine and like and it's good to see australian wine kind of commanding these prices in a global context but you got to pay to play and then after that we decided to go hit one more winery and we wanted to try another classic so we went to the james halliday founded cold stream hills and these guys are owned by treasury wine estates we just thought you know what let's give it a crack and you know it's got a bit of a history there it's been in the region for a long time and to be honest we were honestly we were really impressed with the wines they're actually really delicious and what the best thing about them is they're really affordably priced like that is the problem with a lot of victorian regions is that the wines are getting really really expensive and sometimes they just don't hit the value for money that other regions do like the Adelaide Hills or other places around the country but Coldstream Hills honestly like the wines were sound and really well priced so we actually walked away with two bottles which is rare kind of for us we like to just pick up like one thing that we like and then kind of go from there so we picked up this is kind of classic cellar door stuff they were very firm in letting us know that this was ranked the best sparkling wine in the Arab Valley X amount of times and you know things like that so this is one of the best sparkling wines in the country uh, and it's like 40 odd bucks and it's just delicious like it is really 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 good sparkling wine you know champagne's double the price for just something entry level so really really delicious and then we got a bottle of you know just classic little blend of different vineyards kind of thing 2023 the price is about $30 and it's like the honestly the wine stacked up it was bloody delicious uh, it was one of those classic ones where you buy two bottles you get the tasting back so may as well buy two bottles because the price is so good honestly really wrapped with those wines like and I'll tell you what like the view that you get after you park and turn around is absolutely stunning. A little quick day trip to the Yarra, not like an overnight stay or anything like that. That was the thing with the uh, mornings. We got to hit more wineries over a long weekend. We just did this for a day and that was three pretty solid wineries. Highlight has to be Giant Steps as always. Very, very good wines there again, but you know, I'm excited to kind of go back. There's a couple of places I want to go out of, you know, cool little spots in the Yarra Valley, like oldest vineyard in Victoria now continually producing wines under a different kind of system. Then there's there's Giant Steps, which is modern classic icon. And then there's maybe a previous generation's icon, but still making some really good fun wine. So I think that's a pretty good little snapshot of where the Yarra Valley has been to where it is now and kind of everything in between. Anyways, that's it from me. Just a quick one and hope you enjoyed. And maybe we'll go to another Victorian wine region in a couple... Sometime soon. I don't know. I'm, I'm not making plans that far. I'm really bad at that. Anyways, see you later.